Whenever benzene molecules actually undergo reactions, they usually only tend to undergo those reactions that preserve aromaticity. Remember, aromaticity is a very stabilizing phenomenon. It stabilizes the molecule, lowering its energy because the electron density is allowed to spread out among all the orbitals of all the atoms found in that cyclic planar uh, ring structure of that molecule. Now, exceptions to this rule do exist, and one exception, one exception of a reaction that does not preserve aromaticity when benzene reacts is known as the Birch reduction of benzene. So basically, if we take benzene and we react it with sodium metal mixed in with liquid ammonia in the presence of a bit of ethanol alcohol, we produced 1,4-cyclohexadine. So we see that aromaticity is lost when we go from this benzene to this product. So the question is, why does this reaction actually take place? Why does the Birch reduction of benzene take place? But for example, hydrogenation of benzene does not take place under normal conditions. So under normal temperatures and normal pressure, if we mix this benzene with diatomic hydrogen in the presence of a catalyst, no reaction will take place. And the reason that no reaction takes place here is because we go from a stable aromatic compound to cyclohexane. And cyclohexane is not aromatic. All the bonds in cyclohexane are sp3 hybridized, while the bonds here are sp2 hybridized. And so they contain more as character and therefore are more stable. So the reason this reaction, the hydrogenation of benzene doesn't take place is because this is more stable because it is aromatic. Now, the question is, why does the Birch reduction reaction actually take place? So once again, the Birch reduction reaction is the mixing of benzene with sodium in the presence of liquid ammonia as well as a little bit of ethanol, and this produces 1,4-cyclohexadiene. So the first thing that we should notice is when we go from the reactant benzene to the product 1,4-cyclohexadiene, there are still two pi bonds left in this product. So we only really get rid of one pi bond. So although aromaticity is in fact lost, we still have our two pi bonds. Versus in this case, all the pi bonds would be lost if this reaction were to actually take place. Now, to actually answer why this reaction, the Birch reduction reaction takes place, we must examine the reaction mechanism and the intermediates involved in the reaction mechanism of the Birch reduction. So let's take a look at the four steps that basically describes the pathway that our reaction takes place. So basically, in the first step, we have our sodium metal that is mixed with our liquid ammonia. Now, each sodium metal atom contains a single valence electron, and that valence electron will be able to interact and, in fact, will transfer onto a carbon. So let's suppose it transfers onto this carbon, and that forces this pi bond to transfer to this side and that forces this pi bond, those two electrons on the pi bond, to basically end up on this carbon. So we transfer the electron from the sodium to the carbon and we form the following radical intermediate. Now, generally speaking, radical intermediates aren't very stable. However, this is relatively stable because it is resonance stabilized. That is, this 
this pair of electrons can basically go on to this, forming a, pond bo a uh, pi bond, kicking off this pi bond, forcing it to go on this side, and this can basically continue. So all that electron density in this radical intermediate is delocalized among all these six carbons, and that is a very stabilizing effect. Now, in the second step of our reaction, we take this intermediate and in the presence of a little bit of ethanol alcohol, we see that this alcohol can basically donate this H atom. So this lone pair of electrons takes away this H atom forming the following alkoxide. And we also form, once again, a resonance stabilized intermediate radical in which this electron is basically delocalized among the different carbons that exist on this molecule. Now, in the third step, we take yet another sodium metal atom that contains an electron, and that second electron is transferred onto this carbon atom. And now, we have two electrons on this carbon atom, and once again, this intermediate is resonance stabilized. All this electric charge and all this electron density is delocalized among these carbons and that once again is a stabilizing effect and in the final product we have this molecule basically takes away an H deprotonates yet another ethanol molecule forming the following final product, our 1, 4 cyclohexadiene. So we see that basically the reason that this reaction actually takes place in the first place is because all these intermediates are basically resonance stabilized. They are stabilized and so their energy is lower then if we compare in this case where the hydrogenation of our molecule would take place in a single step and every single one of these pi bonds would be lost and that of course is a very destabilizing thing and in fact the activation energy for this is so high that it only takes place under high temperature conditions. So most reactions with benzene will not take place if they destroy the aromaticity of that benzene, but certain reactions do take place, such as the birch reduction in which the benzene reacts with these reactants to form the 1,4-cyclohexadiene. And the only reason this takes place is because only a single pi bond is actually broken and all these intermediates are resonance stabilized and therefore lower in energy and more stable.